Hello, and welcome to Better Know a Member, Natural Resources Edition. To kick off the 115th Congress, we'll be profiling each Democratic member of the committee to help the public develop an understanding of their districts, interests, and positions on environmental issues. With us today is Congressman Jared Huffman, the representative of California's Fight in Second District. Mr. Huffman is the vice ranking member of the committee and the ranking member of the Water, Power, and Oceans Subcommittee. Congressman Huffman, tell me about yourself and why natural resources are important to you and your constituents. I think throughout my life, I've valued opportunities to be outdoors, to be part of nature, whether it's growing up in the Midwest and fishing uh, with my dad, with my brothers, or uh, after coming to California, experiencing everything that the Bay Area and the North Coast have to offer. Um, it's great stuff, and it's worth protecting. It's my understanding that one of your favorite things to do in your free time is go fishing. What's the best place in your district to go fishing? And on a more serious note, what are steps you can take as a lawmaker to preserve the fish populations and habitats for future generations? First of all, if I told you the best place in my district to go fishing, I would not be a very good fisherman because fishermen guard these things very closely. So I cannot reveal the best place in my district to go fishing. Uh, but I can tell you a pretty place that you might want to try. It's a little hard to get to. You could ride your mountain bike down from Alpine Dam to Kent Lake and uh, fish among the redwood trees. Um, it's not the best place, but it's one of the prettiest. And I'll, I'll you know, if, if I have occasion to swear you to a solemn oath of secrecy, I might reveal the actual best place to fish in my district, but I can't do that for the whole world on video. Yeah. So what I can do on this video is tell you some of the things that I and my colleagues are fighting for to protect fisheries and great fishing places all over the place. One of the most important is to make sure that this effort to remove four aging hydroelectric dams on the Klamath River continues to move forward. This is one of our most important salmon rivers on the West Coast. It happens to be in my district and we can do a lot for salmon runs and for steelhead. This is a world-class river valued by fishermen, Native American tribes, downstream communities, and many other stakeholders. It's an example of something that I and others are working on uh, to make a difference. How does Republicans blame the minuscule Delta smelt, a silvery blue fish that smells like cucumbers, <laughs> for California's economic and water woes? What's your take? It's a classic false choice. Uh, the Delta smelt is an indicator species. Um, it's sort of like the canary in the coal mine is not supposed to be about the canary. It's supposed to be telling you something. Something very important in the case of the Delta smelt, it's telling us that the estuary is, is in real trouble. There's a reason why this species is teetering on the brink of extinction, and it has to do with major alterations that we've made to this estuary and some of the water operations in particular. So, you know, you could vilify the, the little Delta smelt, but if the Delta smelt goes, there's about five or six species in line right behind it that are also going to go. And you're also going to see water quality suffer. You're going to see other impacts. And I think rather than vilify this fish because it's small and maybe not as charismatic as some of the megafauna that we sometimes like to protect, I think we should listen to what it's telling us. That's what the Endangered Species Act is all about. Where did you first learn to play guitar? And what kind of music <laughs> do you like to play? Also, what songs did you play for the Democratic lawmakers when you were at the Democratic retreat in uh, February? Very important questions. First, um, I grew up playing the guitar, not particularly well, but um, I enjoy it. And there's really only one kind of music in the world, and it's James Taylor. So if you like James Taylor, and you want to listen to only James Taylor, hang around with me. Another large product of your district is, is cannabis. Do you consider cannabis to be a natural resource? And if so, how should it be dealt with and regulated? Well. I, I consider cannabis to be a plant, and I think by definition that makes it sort of a natural resource. Um, it's a lot more than that in my district because 60% of the marijuana in America comes from three counties in my district. We call it the Emerald Triangle. So it's Trinity, Humboldt, and Mendocino counties. You're talking about natural resources. The truth is cannabis and the illegal underground cannabis industry is causing a lot of environmental damage, uh, a lot of illegal water uh, activities, water theft, uh, an awful lot of uh, growing on forest lands and in wilderness areas. We call these uh, trespass grows. But they're done in very destructive ways. They clear cut trees, they use terribly potent uh, pesticides, herbicides, uh, rat poison to get rid of uh, pests that might 
damage the, the marijuana crop. And, and so when we find these trespass grows and see what's actually going on, they're, they're highly contaminated. And often we don't even have the funding to clean them up after we've raided them. And my district is just full of these things. It's becoming uh, just an enormous environmental uh, tragedy. Um, so look, I uh, just to cut to the chase on what I think we should do on cannabis policy or marijuana policy, I think we have to legalize it. None of these problems that I see in my district the underground economy, the violence, the terrible environmental damage are going to get better unless we bring this industry out of the shadows, start holding it to high standards, actual permits and uh, compliance requirements and taxation and things like that. So that's why you'll see me being very active on that issue. Old footage of President Donald Trump in jeans and a polo shirt playing volleyball on a beach resurfaced online. Here's the remarkable footage in dramatic slow motion. As a three-time NCAA All-American volleyball player and a member of the 1987 USA volleyball team, do you have any tips for the Commander-in-Chief? First of all, I wish that I could unsee that image. Is there any way to unsee that? Oh, well, I think what I would tell Donald is stick to golf. Congressman Huffman, thank you for being with us today for another installment of Better Known Member, Natural Resources Edition. We'll be back next time with another Democratic member of the Committee on Natural Resources.